The left-wing anarchist, Jacob Graham, you may not have heard of him, but he's been jailed for 13 years for preparing acts of terrorism and declaring he wanted to kill at least 50 people. Yeah, we hear a lot about Islamist terrorism. We hear a lot about far-right terrorism, but we don't hear a lot about far-left terrorism. But this is a case where the 20-year-old from Liverpool prepared a bomb-making manual, which he called the Freedom Encyclopedia. Exchanging messages with people who shared his hatred of the government on the messaging app platforms such as Telegram. These are encrypted platforms. Well, joining us now is former Labour MP Lord Walney, and he's an advisor on political violence and disruption. Um, thank you very much for joining us. What do we know about this individual beyond the reports we've seen in the newspapers and elsewhere? We know he's a far left anarchist, despised the government in all its forms, presumably, and was thinking about bombing the government, bombing the public? Yes, and, and the reports from the court case suggest that he had uh, as a, a role model the, um, the man known as a Unabomber in the, uh, in the United States who had uh, waged a campaign of, of, of terrorism from a, um, a remote outpost um, uh, deep, in, um, uh, uh, deep in the middle of nowhere in, in the States, for, I think, for, for around 17 years before he, were, for, before he was caught. This individual described himself as left-wing. I think when you, when you look at some of the things that he was apparently saying, there is clearly a, a crossover between um, some of the, the, the far-right, freedom-loving rhetoric. And indeed, you, you can often see that horseshoe of politics and ex extremism where the, 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 the far-left can, can actually end up holding things in common with the, uh, with the very far-right in this country and, uh, and internationally. But th this case is going to stand out because of his stated, belief, uh, his, uh, stated conviction that he was far-left, because... We look at the, the the situation of violent extremism, and yes, you are right that by, by far the greatest threat that we still faced is from violent islamism from uh, from from groups or, or radicalized individuals um, who take that um, uh, who pervert that um, a form of Islam into um, violent intent. And then uh, there is a, remains a significant threat from the, the violent far right. But, but so far, in this country at least, we have seen far less of uh, the, f the far left um, radicalism escalating into actual violent intents against individuals. But there clearly is, a, it, there are clearly examples in other countries where it is more prevalent, mm -hmm. and you can see a path of radicalization. Um, in this country where it could become more prevalent here. John, I'm fascinated by what you say about this individual's inspiration from the Unabomber mm. in the United States. Now, for those that, that mm. don't know about the Unabomber, a former academic, uh, pathologically opposed to industrialization, thought of himself as an environmentalist and started planting bombs across the United States to try and get the country to go back to living with nature. And, and I just wonder how prevalent might this uh, ideology be? Is there a risk, in your view as the government's advisor on extremism, is there a risk that some of these people that smash windows, throw paint at buildings, block roads, could go one step further and follow that ideology that we saw in the Unabomber and their bombs in the United States, his bombs in the United States, for an environmental cause? Well, you can imagine you say that to, envir to radical environmental activists in the UK today and they get very cross. Um, and there is a vibrant debate internally, I think, within um, militant environmental movements about what are legitimate um, tactics and, and, and what are not. And so far, they have, um, they have ruled out, thankfully, that kind of violent targeting of individuals. But you have seen it in other countries. You've seen it in the... Uh, United States uh, in a minority, but for a, a significantly greater degree than here. And that path of, of radicalization is certainly possible if you believe 
that your cause is the most important thing affecting the world and that the current levers that you have to change it are um, are fundamentally broken and you get yourself into a position of believing, therefore, that breaking the law is not only justifiable, but it is your responsibility, which is where is the kind of, of path of argument that some of our radical environmental processors have found themselves on, then you can see that logical leap in the future of groups saying, well, if, if this level of, of radical action hasn't worked, then we need to take it to the, to the next level. And that's why my, I feel my work on political violence is really important, to try to restate the the primacy of the parliamentary democracy we live in, to say that we're actually really lucky, we're blessed to be able to have that parliamentary, liberal parliamentary democracy, when, where we have got the option of if you want to change something, bluntly you get a majority of your fellow citizens believing in the same thing and, and, and take that into the, uh, Lord, the ballot Lord, box. Warmly, and we we'll, need to we'll steer to there, the radicalism a... towards that. It's a, it's a really important warning you make, and it's clear you can see those stepping stones for ignoring one law on one thing, how you go from smashing a window to planting a bomb. It's not that, lo that, that large a logical leap. Uh, but Lord Walney, uh, really, really thank your, your presence here and, and your expertise on this concerning issue.